LeBron James won't be long for the Lakers' upcoming two-game road trip as he rehabs his injured groin. The team announced the King will return to practice next week. James has already endured the longest stretch of consecutive games missed of his career. The Lakers have gone four and seven in his absence so far. Game one of that trip is in Oklahoma City, and that's game two of the TNT doubleheader, which begins with the 76ers and Pacers. Coverage, as always, Grant, begins here at 6.30 Eastern time with game time on NBA TV, but you knew that. I did. Second meeting of the season for the Spurs and Mavericks. San Antonio took the first. There's Luka Doncic. Luka the Don. Special. Are we, are we making that name nickname stick, Luka the Don? It's, in, it's under consideration. Okay. Mavericks start on a 23 to four run. Dirk, he's still doing it. Still doing, doing it. Doing it for the old folks. I see you dirty. <laughs> that was the first Luka to Dirk assist of the season and their oh, careers. But this three right here, come on now, Luka. Don't, don't show him everything, man. It's just your rookie year. Don't show it all to him. Luka was like four or five months old when Dirk began his career. Are you serious? Yeah, it's crazy. Wow. It is crazy. Doncic had 25, eight and eight. Spurs in the game. Remember, down 19 early. DeMar DeRozan. Gives them their first lead of the game at 82 84. Uh. There's DeAndre Jordan from Doncic. Jordan had nine and nine, unusual numbers for him. Spurs close it out. DeMar DeRozan, eight of his 14 happened in the fourth. Donald oh. Bertan there, then DeRozan. Step back. Also had nine assists. Step to the side. Hey, you know how he goes. Sidestep. Sidestep. Hey, man, what's this Thank weird music we got playing out though? Bro? It's a little funky. What's this, what's this weird game show game? What's got going here? on up there, man? Hey, Sometimes <laughs> we experiment with the music. Just to see Come what on down. <laughs> you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is game show music, man. I feel like we should get a prize. Southwest and the Dallas Mavericks to join us to talk about Dennis Smith Jr. Now, we've heard the rumblings, the rumor mill. Number one, what have you seen personally? that would leave you to believe that the Mavericks are ready to move on from a lottery pick like Dennis Smith Jr.? Well, I, I, quite honestly, Ro, I think it's really more the outside perception that they are ready to move on. You know, a lot of times when we talk about this, we say the Mavericks think this or the Spurs think this, but the truth is there's a lot of people in a front office and they a lot of times don't all have a uniform opinion, right? I think a lot of people make an assumption that because Luka is going to have the ball in his hands so much and Dennis has never played basketball without the ball in his hands that they can't fit. So people kind of start leaping to conclusions. Keep in mind, uh, you know, Dennis has missed a lot of time this year with injury. They haven't really played on the floor together all that much, at least not enough to determine that they can't play together. And so I think a lot of it is sort of outside forces. There's internal forces as well. But I do think there's people in the Maverick organization that want this to play out, that want them to continue to grow together. Because if you look at the last 20 years, the only top 10 picks the Mavericks have had have been, you know, Devin Harris, which they traded for, and Luka and Dennis. They don't get top 10 picks. So you don't just want to move on from a guy so early. And you certainly don't want to take 50 cents on the dollar because other teams perceive him as someone that you have to trade. Skin, Derek Fisher here. Speaking of these guys having the opportunity to, to grow and develop as kind of a unit, uh, what's the plan in Dallas? Is it is it to try and contend in the Western Conference, you know, hanging around that 7-8 seed? Or is there really a plan to start to rebuild around Doncic and maybe Dennis Smith is in that plan and you're thinking about three to five years from now being one of the top teams in the West? I think that's a great question, and I, I think, you know, perhaps maybe that question was sort of answered for them with the injury of J.J. Barea. If you look at where the Mavericks were in the standings and uh, what their schedule is like coming up, it was going to be t difficult. Now, they can still do it, and they're still going to try to win games. The good news for the Mavs is that if you look at how their salary cap is going to be structured over the next several years, they're going to have a ton of space. So they don't have to make decisions to quote unquote rebuild and not try to win games because it's not going to impact how much space they have. More than likely, they will be conveying their first round pick to the Atlanta Hawks this year. So they're not going to be building this year through the draft. So there's no advantage to them to not try to win, not try to make the playoffs because it doesn't have any long term implications on how they will build around Luka. But I think the bottom line is you're right. They will build around Luka. Luka is a generational type talent. They're very fortunate to have gotten him. And so everything is going to be about the right fit around him. But they don't have to make any hard decisions right now. They just need to go out and try to win every game because the offseason is going to be totally different. There's nothing that's going to happen here over the next couple months that will anyway hinder what they're trying to do. 
Skin, how much did Luca's seemingly, you know, transition from EuroLeague star to, to really NBA impact player change the calculus of the, the blueprint in Dallas? Like, how much did him being as good as he is, as quickly as he has, change everything for everybody? I think, I don't know that I would say that it necessarily changes it as much as it just escalates it. And it puts in your mind, wow, we can be better sooner than we thought. We can be a, a contending caliber team sooner than we thought. You know, they have uh, Harrison Barnes under contract for one more year if he opts in. Uh, they have Dennis Smith Jr. They have Luka. They did really, really well with their second-round pick, Jalen Brunson. He looks like an NBA player. In fact, sometimes you watch him and go, man, that looks like a young Derek Fisher. So they've hit on a lot of their young players. Again, they have tons of space. But I think they look at it now as, you know, it's so hard to get a player that can impact your franchise. I'm not taking shots at any other franchises, but you can look at teams that have been in the, the lottery for six and seven years, and they have lots of good players, but nobody that changes your franchise. Luka changes your franchise. I, I don't think it's even a question now at this point. I mean, even if he dips a little bit, it's still all-star caliber type play. So now you look at it and go, okay, is he the sort of sensation that other players want to come play with? We have all this cap space. Can we get some of these free agents? Or more likely, I think, make trades to acquire players into your cap space. That's the way the Mavericks got Harrison Barnes from the Warriors in the first place. They like to not overcommit to situations and see what opportunities arise. They did it with Monte Ellis. They did it with Harrison Barnes. They did it with Bogut. They've been very good and fortuitous at doing that type of stuff. And I think Luke is the kind of guy that players will want to play with. So it doesn't change things, I would say, as much as it escalates this whole process and makes it happen sooner. Hey, Skin, before we let you go, of course, we talked about Luca on the court. We've witnessed what he's done, his clutch moments. He's come up big, doing everything he wants to on the court. But the impact that he's had away from the basketball court, the, the, the Luca mania that we've discussed, it's even impacted your family as well. Yeah, guys, so I got a 13-year-old daughter, and I not only work for the Mavericks, but I work in sports talk radio. And we're the Dallas Cowboys station and the Rangers station. So we've been around Dak and Zeke and with the Rangers and all this stuff. The only one she's ever cared to have her picture taken with is Luka Doncic. And I don't know if maybe she thinks they're the same age. I don't know what the deal is here, but Luka mania is real, boys. And when we went on the recent East Coast trip, and you could see it in Boston and Philly with a lot of European media being there and the types of questions that Rick was having to answer, it is real. It is crazy. I, I, I'm in shock that he's where he is with the All-Star voting, but I think it just sort of lends itself to the idea that, hey, this guy is a phenom at 19 years old. He'll be 20 later this month. He was a star over in Europe. He is a star here. And if you hear what Draymond Green says about him after they play or Paul George says about him after they play, other, other top flight players in this league recognize it. And I think fans are loving uh, the Lucas step back magic. We get it every night here and it's pretty good stuff. You know, it's pretty good stuff. You joining us right here coming up clutch as usual. Jeff Skin Wade, enjoy the game, man. Greatness is you. Hey, thank you, boys. Have a great night. 10-year challenge. Everybody's been taking it, and Luca, he accepted it today. Take a look at Luca. <laughs> 10 years ago? Wearing wow. diapers? I mean, come on. I mean, this was a part of the baggy era. We all remember the early 2000s. We were all wearing baggy clothes, and wearing baggy basketball uniforms was the thing. I, I love the 10-year challenge where these people who were, like, in second grade. Not in like, <laughs> I don't even want to. I don't want to think about the 10-minute challenge, let alone the 10-year challenge. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I want no parts of this challenge at the moment <laughs> where I was 10 years ago. <laughs> you weren't in a bad place. No, you? not at all, not at all. You weren't in a bad place at all. But, I mean, but, but Luca has been uber impressive so far. Thoughts real quick, all-star team, all-star player, yes or no? Is, is he a top 24 player in the NBA right now? I mean, he would ha he's in the conversation. He is, and, and that alone to me says a lot. The, the, the West is, it's tough to make the All-Star team in the West. And if, if we ever get to a format where there's no conferences and it's just 24 top guys, maybe he gets in anyway. But in the West, for him to get in outside of fan voting, you know, you have to start thinking about putting him in front of some bona fide All-Star guys. And I'm not sure, as great as he's been, if he goes above you know, Dame Lillard's and other guys that are in the West that there's no way you can leave off the roster. Yeah, my, my test is always what's been the, the hurdle for a rookie? Like, how high a bar has a rookie had to climb to get into the playoff mix? Was LeBron an All-Stars a rookie? Mm. 
You know what I mean? Like Very true. Because to me, and everybody likes to compare numbers with Luka and LeBron, you know, in terms of what they did at this point of their rookie seasons, it's tough. Like, it's one thing to be an impact player and to, and to surprise us or to really kind of shock us with how well you've played. It's another thing to be sitting there on All-Star Sunday getting your name called with the best of the best. Guys who have been playoff vetted, vetted over, you know, the, the decades. That is a very high bar. Luca to me, has future All-Star for a very long time written all over him. Yeah. But I'd have to go through player by player to see, yeah. <laughs> does he jump this guy? Does he jump that guy? If the Mavericks aren't competing in the playoff mix. Now, if that's, that's a different calculus. If he's got the Mavericks up in that mix, maybe that top four mix for the playoffs, then we can talk. Right now, great story, future all-star, but I'm not sure he's there right now. Well, as a rookie, if he does, he would join the companies of the recent guys like Shaquille O'Neal. You think about Blake Griffin, Yao Ming, who made the all-star game as rookies. That's, that's, tall, that's tall cotton right there. Yes, it is. Very to good be among those players. Luka has great handles, but which player would you want to take these handles? Oh, is it Kyrie? Oh. oh. We're building the perfect Skr-skr. player. <laughs> We're going to show you how it's done. Coming up next on Game Time. Uh, you know, he came out, his knee was a little sore, and uh, he was getting toward his minutes, so we thought it would be cautious to just not push him anymore. We thought we could finish the game off anyway, and it's just, you know, I hope it's nothing more than just soreness, just general soreness. Well, it's a knee, so it's, it's, all, it's all connected. So, anyway, he had a good good run, and that's what we wanted. What have you seen defensively? Well, I mean, you know, to be honest with you, they hit five big threes that we were on them. They just they made some unbelievable shots. I thought when we got up 13, we got a little complacent, and uh, they scored too quickly, too fast, and and. Uh, you know, that was regrettable, but uh, uh, at that, you know, we're up seven with about 40 seconds, and it's one, two, three, I think three threes, they were hit, they were covered, and they hit them, and, you know, they tip your hat to them, and hey, let's go to the next one. What were your thoughts on that last, on the last play, like your, your that last shot? That yeah, he's, he's a guy who can get a wide open shot like that, and uh, uh, he can hit them, and yeah, that's why we went there. Well, the first time. Well, Mike D'Antoni got to be scratching his head talking about Eric Gordon leaving the game with that same right knee injury that had cost him eight games. Story of the night, James Harden goes off in the third quarter for 22, finishes the night with 58 points, back-to-back 50-point efforts, but not enough tonight as the Nets get a spectacular effort from Jared Allen, taking advantage of not only the shorthanded, but the short rockets. Jared Allen joins a very elite and very small club Players in NBA history to score 20 points and grab 24 rebounds prior to turning 21 years old. Allen joins Andre Drummond, Dwight Howard, Shaquille O'Neal, and John Drew from back on Sekou's favorite Hawks team back in 74-75. <laughs> Jared Allen tonight with an amazing game, 20 points, 24 rebounds, taking advantage of P.J. Tucker, who had to guard him a large portion of the night. Meanwhile, inside of our coach's film room tonight, giving us a unique perspective of the action is Derek Fisher. D. Fish, in addition to Jared Allen inside, Spencer Dinwiddie outside, 33 points, 10 rebounds, including some incredible clutch buckets in the fourth quarter in overtime. Yeah, Spencer Dinwiddie, even though James Harden, the man in Houston, that's who everybody wants to talk about. But as we roll the clips here, we'll see Spencer Dinwiddie's ability to make plays at multiple levels. Hill down three, Austin Rivers trying not to foul, giving him some room, pulls up from four or five feet behind the three-point line, knocks it down. And here, really impressive execution. This is why the Nets are at 500. 40 seconds to go in overtime. Double stagger away. Joe Harris comes up. Two guys go. Allen with the finish. Misses the free throw. Here with the offensive rebound. Spencer Dinwiddie back with the ball. We saw the first clip where he knocks down the three. So now you have to stay close so he doesn't pull up on you. What does he do? Smart play. Gets downhill. A little bit of slide step around P.J. Tucker, bump, and the foul goes to the free throw line, puts the Nets up one. They secure the game. And so Spencer Dinwiddie, one of the great stories in the NBA, 
a player that has come back from injury, being traded, etc. Kenny Atkinson showing the confidence in him, and uh, the Nets with a big, big road win down in Houston. Fish, the Nets at 500 through 46 games for the first time since the 2012-2013 season. The Nets, they are coming. Derek Fisher in our film room. We're coming back with more live crunch time.